in the last episode of American Artifact, we were at the Munich apartment of a certain bohemian corporal who took Europe and the world over the brink in World War II. In that video, we shared some of the items that U.S. soldiers looted from the apartment, which included his World War I Iron Cross and Black Wound Badge. But that's not all that came out of this apartment. So we're back at the Gettysburg Museum of History to look at some of the more historically impactful artifacts that U.S. soldiers lifted and brought back home as souvenirs in the final days of World War II. In the last episode of American Artifact, we were on location at Hitler's apartment in Munich. And while we were there, we, we talked about how there was an incident that occurred at the apartment where his niece, uh, Geli Rabal, had committed suicide. Well, this is Geli right here. We didn't show her picture. Uh, here are a few photos of Hitler with his niece. And one of the items to come out of the apartment, along with the silver and the uniforms and the medals and things like that, was this revolver. And it has quite the story. We're going to come back around to this in a moment. But first, there is an artifact here at the Gettysburg Museum of History of something else that came out of the apartment that is absolutely insane. On the last episode of American Artifact, we talked about two major collections that came out of Hitler's apartment that were very historically significant. One being the Philip Ben Lieber collection, which we have a piece of, and the second one was the Andrew Sivy collection, um, which we also have something from him. Um, both of these collections are very, very historically important. Um, the item we have from the Sivy collection is this uniform grouping. Now this uniform grouping actually came out of Hitler's apartment. Now Hitler was not in the SS, this is obviously an SS uniform, but his maid lived in on one of the other floors and his maid was um, married to an SS officer. His name was George Winter and this is the uniform of George Winter including his SS officer's hat, his overcoat or mantel, and his sword. Now these were taken by Andrew Sivy along with a few other items that we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, but this is one of the you know the most documented SS uniforms I believe to come out and um, it's been in the hands of a few collectors over the years but it recently came to the Gettysburg Museum of History and it's um, been well cared for you know, a lot of the uniforms that you see are, you know, have moth damage or something, but this has been taken care of for years. So it's in really excellent condition. And um, it does have George Winter's name inside the hat. I'll show you that in a minute. One thing that I wanted to mention really quick before we move on, uh, if you look at the, the collar tab here, even though George Winters was in the SS, uh, it seems odd that there are no SS runes on this collar tab. Well, that's because in the SS, uh, headquarters and uh, like command staff, their collar device was, was blank. And then over here, you can see, uh, you know, another collar device that shows his rank, uh, which for this would have been Sturmbenfuhrer. Here's another item that came out of the Munich area that is just pretty darn fascinating to me. Uh, now, it looks like just a simple wooden box, which honestly it is, uh, but what we are looking at here is a shoe mine, or more fully, a uh, Schutzen Mine 42. Okay, so these were developed in 1942. Uh, as you can see, you know, being made of wood, uh, this is a mine that would be very difficult to be picked up 
by metal detectors. Uh, I think they make mention of this in uh, Saving Private Ryan. Tom Hanks's character talks about you know little shoe mines that can't be picked up by uh, the metal detectors or mine detectors. Uh, but anyway, the, the way that this would work is there would be a small block of TNT inside of this box. And then there was a, a striker right here um, that had like a, a retaining pin on it. And this would, oh, hang on a second, would be up like this. Um, and then if somebody stepped on it, well, that slot would release the pin and would cause the TNT to detonate and uh, cause damage to the person who stepped on it. Now, the reason that we can say this is from the Munich area is the veteran who recovered it decided to do a little decoration on it. Uh, so here we can see, you know, it says the city of München. And then this right here, this black robed figure holding a red book, uh, is the coat of arms for the city of Munich. I'm not sure about the symbolism on that. Maybe somebody can look that up for me and leave a comment to, to help me out on like the symbolism of the red book and the, the figure draped in black. But anyway, yeah, never seen one of these before. Pretty interesting uh, to see one of these shoe mines here at the museum. I mentioned that the hat has George Winter's name in it, so I wanted to show you that. I pulled it off of the mannequin and inside here there's a his name written in his hand i believe winter and there's a little slot in these hats where people would put a little tag you know so they wouldn't get their hats mixed up if they were at a function there might be multiple hats on a hat rack or something also there's a an rzm tag in here that you can see so this hat's in remarkable condition it's 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 really nice it's one of the better ones that i've had um no no mothing no you know it's just really it's been cared for um, because of the historical significance of it. So um, I want to go over the, a few of the other items that Andrew Sivy brought back um, and, and this really unique historical collection. Um, he, he brought, here's a photo of him first off and in, in this picture he's showing a few of the items and there, there's a stuffed animal which belonged to uh, Gailey, uh, Hitler's niece. And also in his hand is a revolver. Now, looks like a pretty plain Smith & Wesson revolver um, that really wouldn't get much attention except for the fact it, of that it, Hitler actually owned that pistol and he actually had a pistol permit for that gun. Um, here is a photocopy of Hitler's pistol permit or revolver permit. I think, I forget how they word it on here, copy of pistol permit. Um, but the, the real, besides this being owned by Hitler, and there's a few known Hitler guns, there's this really nice gold-plated one that was also taken, I believe, out of the apartment. Um, and there's a couple other documented Hitler uh, weapons. But this revolver is the revolver that Galey shot herself with. Hitler's niece committed suicide in his apartment. And um, it's, it's the so-called gun of destiny that a book was written about this whole situation. Um, in this book, the author um, makes the claim that that gun and the act of Gailey shooting herself in the heart uh, changed the destiny of the 20th century. In the fact that Hitler was supposedly having an affair with Gailey and he would have probably just floundered out, possibly, if he would have stayed with her. Her death was so devastating to Hitler that he initially went into a depression where he was contemplating suicide himself, um, but later it, it, um, he became motivated and um, with the distraction of Galey out of the way, the author theory in this book was that he became what he became and became the political leader that took over Germany and and uh, it gave him the extra um, uh, motivation maybe you would say so there's a whole gun or a whole whole um, uh, book written called the gun of destiny about this whole the the, the civi collection and how it originated um, civi also took the uniform we just discussed and um, the, as I said, he also had a couple other things that he took from Annie Winter, which was Hitler's 
maid. She stayed in the apartment for a period of time and she traded items to some of the occupying American GIs for favors. And uh, Civi also brought home some other items. And there's all kinds of paperwork on this. We have a you know whole document portfolio with an interview with George Winner. Here's a, a documentation about the the um, the uh, uniform. There's a picture of Annie Winner, the the uh, maid. And um, I wanted to show you this picture. This is a picture of Annie Winner and George Winner with Hitler. So. Um, you know, they, they were part of the inner circle. In this book, they, they have a picture of the sword, of George Winner's sword, um, and, and some of the other items that, that, um, that were brought home, like this funeral uh, sash that was in Hitler's apartment. But again, you know, the, the, uh, the Civi collection for historical importance is, is probably one of the, the most important collections of Hitler artifacts along with the, the Ben Lieber collection. There's also some really good close-up photos in this catalog. This is actually an auction catalog. About a year or two ago, this pistol or this revolver was auctioned by Andreas Theus and it, and it brought a price tag of close to a million euros. I mean, it was 800,000 euros, close to a million dollars at the time. So that was... Um, that was sold very recently and there's some other great photos of it so the gun of destiny